So now we come to our visual perception. So just as no two witnesses describe an accident exactly the same, we all perceive the world in our own way. There's a growing body of research which indicates that dyslexic persons in particular do not perceive the world like, like quote, normal folks. So in its extreme, you may have a person who's processing two-dimensional information as three-dimensional information, and this can be a particular uh, cause particular problems when when reading or learning to read. Number four, auditory perception. Um, again, we want to in our strategy, we're going to emphasize pattern recognition versus verbal decoding, and. Uh, the best example I can think of is something, a natural uh, phenomenon like a bird call or a whistle or um, barking versus sounding out the word dog or bird, right? So one of these will have variations in it. You know, no two dog calls or, or bird, bird calls or dog barks are exactly the same, but you can recognize patterns that are familiar. Well, bird and word and nerd, <laughs> if you will, you know, they sound very similar, but you can't rely on pattern recognition. You need to decode each one separately and singularly in order to extract the meaning of it. And number five, visual auditory comprehension. Again, uh, talking about dyslexic, but but persons of various learning styles, they may experience difficulty integrating this information, both visual and auditory. So fortunately for us, there there have been some exercises proven to uh, significantly improve that, audit, that visual auditory or if you want to call it hemispheric integration. Uh, some folks um, refer to this as brain training or brain balancing. Again, these, these, a lot of these techniques have been around for years in one form or another. And so we've included several in this, in this program to facilitate that part of the reading process, that, that visual auditory integration. So depending upon the age of your child, we've got uh, a couple of exercises here that should prove helpful. And for your youngest child, this is a great one, and you can probably think of a hundred variations on it, as long as it's easy and fun for the child. And the basic exercise is our peas porridge hot. Sit facing the child, about a foot or so apart. Uh, later on, you can even do it standing. But I would start with sitting. Clap both hands on your knees. Clap your hands together. Now, now you're going to clap your right hand to the child's right hand crossing the, that left to right midline and 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 you may want to in the beginning lead over a little bit more to help the child be successful at this and later on you can let them come more across to you um, then you're gonna number four is you're gonna clap your hands together clap your hands to your knees clap your hands together again and now take your left hand bring it over and clap the child's left hand again crossing the midline and number eight clap your hands together very easy to do clap you know you can do this a couple of times one two three four five six seven eight and and when you feel like you're ready you add in the song so it's peas porridge hot peas porridge cold peas porridge in the pot nine days old some like it hot, some like it cold, some like it in the pot nine days old. Very simple, very fun. And I know the, the young girls from probably first through fourth grade in, in most of the elementary schools, they come up with all kinds of ways of doing these clapping, uh, little clapping routines. And, and again, keep it at the child's level. We do not want it to become something that's frustrating and burdensome. We want to have fun. We want to keep it light. And again, the only, the real point of this exercise is the hand-eye coordination and the crossing over 
the midline to get that 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 hemispheric integration. Another exercise we use, or, or maybe depending upon the age of the child, you might start here. Uh, if the child is past the age of seven, I, I don't think I would start with peas porridge hot. So uh, very simply, with the arms bent, elbows at the waist, we're going to have the child walk along in a straight line, twisting at the waist slightly and touching the palm of one hand to the opposite knee and alternating left hand to the right knee, right hand to the left knee with each step. As the knee comes up, touch the hand, palm to the knee. Very simply, depending upon how much room you have, 10 or 12 steps forward and 10 or 12 steps backward. So you want to arrive approximately where you started. And a great, a great routine is to just repeat this about four times a day, or four times, up and back four times, once or twice each day. If your child is experiencing significant difficulty crossing the midline, you may want to increase this uh, and do it maybe for a few minutes twice a day. Uh, one option is to have the adult, the supervising adult, walk in front of the child as a mirror. This can help set a, a you know kind of a steadier pace to the child that may become tend to become distracted or or kind of lose his lose his place if you will as the child becomes more accustomed to the exercise we may actually have the child focus his eyes uh, in each of the four quadrants by following the, someone's hand or focusing on a spot on the wall first up to the left then up to the right down to the left and down to the right as he's doing the crosswalks up and back. Um, for the really advanced child to really get that brain focused and working to, as a whole, we may have the child count silently up to, so let's say, 10 or 12, and then backwards from, you know, from 12 to 0 or 12 to 1 as he's walking back and forth. Again, we're, we want to engage the brain with the different processes while we're while we're focusing our our attention in in primarily in that visual domain